Welcome along to my studio. Thank you for tuning in and I appreciate it. I would like to bring you the scene game that happened a couple of hours ago. And uh, so I'd like to bring the scene game and I'd like to talk to you about the end game a little bit more because I do tend to like to go on about the end game a wee bit, even though I'm not a big fan of the end game. I think it's very, very important to know about the end game and the intricacies and even from my hand I don't uh, at all say to you that I'm an expert of end games there are experts out there like Raven Sturt is an end game expert in my opinion and I think that's correct but here we have this end game that occurred in my game and I have the great fortune or so whatever the word is to say that I'm a pawn up now the situation with this here is this um sorry um this pawn formation is very important to black because if i get rid of these then these two pawns are protected past if i can get rid of these two pawns sounds a bit hopeful uh but that's actually something that actually occurred because I want to nibble away at this pawn here on d5 with moves like c4, but of course if I do it straight away, I'm going to meet most likely knight d4, or maybe first pawn takes pawn, and then knight d4. Now the thing about endgames is, one of the first questions I asked my uh, junior that I'm coaching was this. What do you like most about chess and it was of course something i relate to as attacking but when i asked what is the thing you least like about chess uh, he responded in the negative towards end games and particularly there of king and pawn end games so guess what i did i started to concentrate with him on king and pawn end games because the reason being is that I want him to make King and Pawn in games his friend, his special friend. So that's why I do that. So here we go. This is the first move coming up as it's my move. I play G5 here. I possibly would be better to play Knight E3, but I sort of want to be able to look after this pawn if I need to. And I'm not quite sure that I'm trying to reduce the scope of this knight which was early on in the scene game to reduce its scope because it was coming from knight e7 to e6 uh, to c6 as it had been pushed away from f5 a couple of moves ago so i want to try to uh, capitalize on my uh, extra pawn in this case but these end games can be very difficult to win uh, a pawn up. So I would like to get rid of the knight. I'd like to exchange our knights, which is favourable to the person who's a pawn up or two. And if you're a pawn, if you're a pawn down, it's not favourable to swap off your pieces, but swap off your pawns because. Uh, it's less likely that I can checkmate with a knight than I can with an extra pawn, if you get what I'm saying. And that's the principle of, one of the principles of the end game. If you're down in material, which I'm not saying you're going to be, but it happens to me that I'm down in material, the best thing to do is to not swap off material. I mean, something, uh, if you're down in material, uh specifically pawns it's not good to swap pieces off uh, otherwise if you can swap off to your advantage uh, sometimes it can be good to swap off pieces but generally speaking when you're losing it's best to try to keep away from exchanges unless we're talking about heavy stuff that sort of thing so here's the first move is g5 and so, like I said before, it doesn't mean that I'm the uh, really good in-game player or something like that. But I think that you do need to look at having the the kings. Uh, you 
do need to look at having king and pawn in games um, partially as something you are a little bit more comfortable with than you are maybe initially. So knight e7 comes back to sit in f5 because the thing is about end games is that um, you want to scheme more than you want to do plans and things like that. So you want to sort of scheme and think, well, what can I do in this position? I'm going to play knight e3 to prevent knight f5, of course. Here comes g6 to set up that post. And here I play h6, which is one day possibly going to be a pass pawn with this pawn move to g6. And then these pawns are quite hard for black to look after, especially if the, the king is looking after this side of the board. Sort of thing. So sorry about that. If the king is looking after this side of the board, black... It's hard to stop this g6 pawn and h7 pawn if it happens that after knight f5, which happens, black um, is taken, of course, because I want to swap off. And now, as I'm saying before, now I have a protected pass pawn. This is a protected pass pawn. This is not a protected pa um, pawn, pass pawn or so. It's not protected. And so I can start to gang up on it, and that's the thing. I can, but black has got this f pawn here, okay? So black's got this f pawn, and this f pawn can be a, a problem if I start to march myself outside, like to b4, if I can even get there. I can't. I have to wriggle around here, and I'm just blabbering now. I have to wriggle around to get to b4, don't I? But then this, um, this pawn can move. And it's three squares away from queening. So I have to be careful with that pawn. Uh, but I don't have to be so careful with that pawn. Then black has to be careful for this pawn. And why is that? Well, one... <coughs> excuse me. One is the pawn is more advanced. So it's on black's fifth rank. Two, the pawn is protected past. Three, I have this possibility of ganging up on this d5 defender on d5 and and the other thing the the other beauty of this is is that when black gets the king on d5 say they can never take my d pawn because i can just run my e6 pawn to e7 and e8 queen whereas this pawn being not protected past so what i'm saying is that the king the to relieve the, the um, protection of this pawn on e5, if it gets free, is having to take this pawn eventually. So, and it cannot, because then it makes way for its tomb far away from the runaway e pawn. However, this is a past f pawn for black, which I've been mentioning. So if I stay in the vicinity, I'm okay. Uh, but that's just going to end up in a draw. My opponent's probably going to be quite happy to do that. So I'm just trying to say that that F pawn cannot, is, is not able to move with, with protection of itself afterwards. So I can easily round it up, even if I get my king here, I think. I can still round it up because I've got one, two moves away from the the pawn square f1 and f2 see so if i work it out that's what i can do so the advantage is obviously with white if we ask the computer it's going to say straight away even though it might not look at the position completely correctly uh nor will i, nor will I. uh the the um the computer will say that white is in a one position or isn't a decisive advantage or the upper hand at least so what i have to do is i have to look at busting up this protection here and then if that happens well then i've got just if the pawn just takes then i'm away running laughing 
but I just wanted to show you the sort of scheming that can go on in this, okay? Because I sort of think I get into a, a frame mind mind frame of thinking like I'm playing drafts. Uh, but the thing is, is with an extra checker or draft on the board or whatever you call it, with an extra check or uh, pawn in this case on the board, you have an extra move sometimes, sometimes you don't. And also if I can get, just say I get rid of these two, then the king's always going to be defending here. Or if I just attack this d5 pawn, okay, I attack this d5 pawn, black has to sort of defend it, yeah? And so meanwhile, I can just move my king back here. And the pawn can't move here because it just, well, it can move there, but I just take it, see? So what I'm trying to say here is that with the extra pawn, I've also got an extra tempi. Uh, black wants to defend that d5 pawn or else surrender the d5 square to my pawns for rolling and then it's very very simple so anyway i'm going to move on here's c4 as promised and here's king e6 now i could but i didn't look at playing c5 and then that's another another session and another time and that sort of thing because this is going to be a put a pass pawn sooner or later but it's going to be a single pass pawn or it might be even better but i'm still going to have to look after this f5 pawn whereas black's still going to have to look after this e5 pawn because it's protected pass and now the tension's in the position so i played a move which may or may not be a very good move in fact it might not even be a good move i played a4 I can actually play just, um, I can actually just play um, pawn takes pawn, yeah? And then if king takes pawn, which is like pawn takes pawn check, uh, king takes d5, king e3, and then it's black smooth. I can sort of wriggle around with these, the, this king to come to here, you see, and play d5 when it's opportune. And black cannot leave this e5 pawn, can't go and start try to nibble at the d4 pawn because, as mentioned previous, this pawn's going to march. Whereas this pawn is not like piggy wiggy or whatever, uh, piggy wiggy in the middle sort of, um, cannot get there as easily as this pawn that supported protected past. So it's a very, very good advantage to have a protected pass pawn. In this case, now it is. So with this move A4, I'm not saying that that's the best move. I probably can just play uh, CD5. And if I use that word just with my junior now, um, I'm in trouble. I am in trouble because I'm not allowed to use that word. Because I told him my foot. <laughs> so cd5 now we just have b4 now um it's going a little bit different than i was intending to show but i can probably just play king e3 here too i want to get tension so here i threaten um king c4 so king d5 happens. So what do I do now? I play king c3, you see. And so this is asking the question, because like I'm three steps away from the f pawn if I've got my king on c4. And it's four squares away, four squares store, away from doing anything major. Maybe um, the best move here for black would be king here. Uh, but then I have got this move, haven't I? And after f4, I could just go king d3, king d5, and then king here. See? And the king can't take because of pawn up, up, up. That sort of thing, excuse me. And 
then I can just come and round up this pawn on f4. And then I'm two pawns up. The other thing is, is that black hasn't got time to to come here later and grab this a pawn and march this a pawn because it's too late. Black has only got chances of this sort of thing, but that's no good either. So here is f4. So I play king d3. So I'm asking the question now. Well, you you've just gone and lost your pawn now because I know about the protected pass pawn which is uh, one of my favorite end games is my two pass pawns and my opponent's two pass pawns and we were both in front of the king the kings were both in front of our enemy pawns and I moved my king away and took one of the pawns like that pawn there as black I took that pawn so I could march the safe pawn but it wasn't possible in this case because my king's in this vicinity Okay, that is the end of the session, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, think about the end game, um, and that's enough, I suppose. Just think about the end game, but um, don't get too um, tied up with it. Uh, be ready to to think clearly in the end game about um, scheming and um, centralizing your king and even going to the other side of the board with your king because your king is a piece all of a sudden centralizing your king pawn grabbing as opposed to the opening which is the opposite so go pawn grabbing in the end game centralize your king play actively put all your things that you've got as best places as they can be on and as well as that scheme scheme think if i do that what happens if i instead of thinking analytically like i used to do like i thought oh how many moves does it how many moves is it going to take me to go to h8 with my king sort of thing and of course I can't get my king to h8 at the moment, but how many moves is it going to take? And I'd be counting them. I'd be going one, two, like that. I would. So instead of that, you scheme. You just think, well, I'm going to want to move my king to h8. And uh, I'm going to do my best. Not that I want to move my king to h8, but that's sort of an I the, the sort of concept I'm trying to explain is is instead of um, constructive um, absolute analysis of things, it's more scheming in the end game than analytical and attacks and uh, middle game sort of planning and things like that. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, it is a bit long, that bit, but um, I think I, I make it clear what I'm tr trying to talk about. And so I bid you very much farewell and thank you very much. If you're still here with me, thank you. You deserve a chocolate fish. I'll put one in the mail for you. <laughs>